Balake, where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is present with my good friend, Nora Ames from Oh No, Nora. How's it going, That's me. Nora? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, present. everybody, for the delayed start. As many of you know, I use my actual phone for my camera. And sometimes when my computer doesn't want to uh, handshake with my phone, I have to update all the software. And it was the endless update from hell. So anyway, totally my fault. 100% my fault. By the way, Nora's channel is now monetized. And so if you're watching, hey. I saw someone in the chat. It might be your first, uh, maybe I was going to say it might be your first super chat, but you already did some live streams earlier, didn't yes. you? Yes. But thank so, like, you. Yes. So excuse me, says, is this first <laughs> Nora super chat? It is not my first, but thank you very much. <laughs> Fantastic. We have so much to chit chat about. Oh my goodness. Um, so much to chit chat about. Uh, let's just jump in with a little bit of chit chat about the Danny Masterson trial. You, you've been doing some awesome updates on the Masterson Thank trial. You. And one of the things I want to say about the updates that you're doing is the way you're using your channel is exactly the way I imagine everyone out there uh, who want who's even considered all the former Scientologists who've even considered doing a YouTube channel but is like what would I talk about or what would uh, 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 what would I have to add that's any any different right I my answer to that is even if we're all talking about the same thing what you're adding is different because it's your thoughts about it it's mm -hmm. your unique mm -hmm. perspective it's your stories it's your experience uh, i sort of compare it to the news channels or any any news channels all the news channels talk about the exact same thing but there's 20 <laughs> there's 20 of them doing it and they right. all have their own little perspective or their slant or whatever and what i like about what you're doing is not just that we're talking about the same thing, but from different perspectives, but that you're like, here's what was discussed over here, but here's my take on it. Or here's an experience I had, or here's a story I have that reinforces the thing that was discussed over here. And that is like, um, it's exactly how I would answer the question. If someone said to me, I want to start a channel, but what would I, what would I really do? What would I bring exactly. to the table? Your perspective is all you have to bring to the table. Right. We all have different experiences and perspectives because of the Scientology experience. There's a, a huge overlap in all of our experiences, but it's, yeah. but every one of them is unique and different. Yeah. And um, it's why I was so excited about you restarting your channel is because um, you've got the celebrity center experience. You've got Sea Org, you've got non Sea Org, you've got um, a, a generational experience that's different than, than many others. Anyway, I just love what you're doing, and it's and your videos are so funny. I mean, your kind per personality <laughs> wise, me and you are very similar. <laughs> yes, you know? this is true. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how many requests you and I have both had for the two of us to do like a comedy tour. We would have to figure that out. We would uh, have to do it in like some form of like podcast form or something where we could broadcast it. I'm not opposed to that. I have been getting calls to be a, some form of professional comedian for a long time since high school um and then uh i do recall renee duzak the chief officer telling me in 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 tone 40 at one point that uh why don't i just leave and go become a cruise director because i was much more suited to that um uh, i should have taken her advice that would have saved me a lot of time and i probably would have seen a lot more of the world frankly um <laughs> that would have been and I, like she said that in front of um, uh, Weej and uh, Wendy, my my two immediate seniors, like the the D of T and uh, you know uh, the oh tech God. sec, yeah, the tech sec. Like I was just, and we were all standing there like stunned. And then the two of them looked at each other. And they were like, "She's not wrong." Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 they should have it was like we vote for that like <laughs> they should have proposed you for a, a transfer to the free winds to be the free winds cruise director <laughs> well, here's, here's the irony is that like i was not somehow i didn't get posted as the celebrity like course room word clearer yet i was constantly pulled to do all of the celebrity word clearing they had a word clearer in their course room that was permanently there to do nothing but word clear celebrities, okay? But hey, Wellington Mutize, 
who was a sweet, sweet man from Africa, who I loved very much. He was a very sweet man um, who trained after us. He wasn't in the original group with us, right? But he went to flag and then came back later. Um, and we trained with Wiza, who you may remember. She spoke like a gajillion languages. And that's why she got posted as the supervisor there, because she could speak all these languages. And she was very, you know, exotic and all this kind of stuff. She literally spoke no less than six languages, right. including like, I mean, Arabic. She's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, and so they posted Wellington there because he also like English was like his 11th language, right? Because he was from uh, the continent of Africa. Africa is not a country, kids. It's a continent, but he's from Zimbabwe. Um, and so uh, he spoke many different African languages. Um, and then uh, including uh, Goza, Goza, the one that was like that. And then um, it, Nora, it was, I have to ask, language. what is the point of having someone in this celebrity course and that speaks 11 languages when they all speak English? Right. Well, no, no, no. We had some French people and we had a couple German celebrities and then we had one. Um, but like, but like French Norway and German. Or something. And of course, none of the people in the course room spoke any of those languages. So it was completely, except for Wiza who spoke fluent French. So it was good that like she was there. But then I got pulled in to do the people like John Travolta, uh, you know, uh, Nancy Cartwright, Priscilla, like all the big people, they're asking me, they didn't have Wellington do those people. So then it was like, why is Wellington there? To like word clear Jenna? Yes. Jenna didn't want to work with me. Like she was like, mm. <laughs> like, that's okay, Jenna. That's how I feel about you too. So mm, same thing. <laughs> Did you hear what Leah said about Jenna last night on the stream? That was so great. Holy shit. That that Jenna said she realized it was her purpose in life to serve Tom facts. Cruise. That is facts. It was like people have to understand how Tom Cruise is, is looked at inside. Okay, true story time about Tom Cruise. Okay. So he two two stories about Tom Cruise. So when he was the elevator story, right? When, when she told that yesterday about like when he would be in the building and he's going up and down the elevator, they literally would have the elevator blocked off. And one time that the drill would be, there would have to be somebody stationed on every floor so that when the doors would open, nobody would be able to get in or out to be in the elevator with him. One time, um, somebody was not at the lobby um, properly when he was there and it wasn't supposed to stop at the lobby. We would have people like blocking the buttons so that it wouldn't stop so that he would just get flawlessly to his destination. He was in the elevator with, um, Tommy. So it was Tom and Tommy. It was always just so cute. So, you know, little, like they're just like little bookends, Tom and Tommy. And, um, there was a tour of now just up the street from CC, there is a Catholic all girls school, like right around the corner. Right. So that somehow somebody had arranged a tour for this Catholic all girls school on this day. Do not ask me how the gods had put this all together, but there is a gaggle. And I do mean a gaggle of teen girls downstairs in the lobby trying to get in the elevator to go downstairs to where the Pira Ferry is during their tour. Now, Lizzie, red-haired Lizzie, I don't know if you ever knew her, mm -hmm. is like very innocently doing this tour, telling, look at the ceilings, talking about the fresco, da -da -la -la -la, has pushed the button. And she's telling them all these things and she has her back to the elevator. Okay. So she's telling them all this stuff. Now, for those of you kids who don't know, um, celebrity center has been used for many movies. Okay. Um, the lobby, uh, most famously was used in the film true lies. It was shot up and all this stuff. So she's telling them about that. And then the, now the girls are facing these golden. Was it, doors. was it in Beverly Hills cop as well? It was in Beverly Hills cop is also. Mm. So the doors to the elevator are golden. They're technically made of brass, but they look golden, like gilded. And so they are opening like, and they're standing there is Tom Cruise. Now this is like when Tom Cruise still looked like days of thunder, Tom Cruise, like he's, just pre last samurai Tom Cruise, his hair's growing out for that role. It's just like golden. He's looking very fit, 
you know, and he's standing there with Tom Davis and Tom Davis is like wide eyed, like what the frack is going on? And Tom Cruise is just looking very Tom and the girls just all stop. And they're like, and just let out a shriek, like a K-pop crowd, just like, oh my God. And Lizzie's like turning around in horror, just like slow motion, like, and she and Tommy like lock eyes and he's like, (laughs) <laughs> like, you know, like you're going to the RPF, you're just dead. And he's like furiously pushing the button on the inside. And she's like, and then she just starts trying to like hold the teens back. And Tom's like, you know, doing the celebrity thing, right? Like, and they, you know, it was so embarrassing. Like she got reprimanded at the staff meeting about that. It was so bad, so bad. And then the other time, like, like, like she was supposed to know that Tom was coming down in the elevator. I mean, right. So the other scary. time was when Tom was doing his PTSSP course. And this was told as a funny story during staff meeting. So he was going around and he was being escorted doing the tone spotting drills. Right. So he was supposed to, you know, you're supposed to ask people questions. And one of the questions that you're supposed to ask is like, what's the most obvious thing about me? Right. Mm-hmm. And the person was like in the HGC waiting lounge. This is like where you wait before you go in session, right? And most people were like, "Oh, you're you're Tom Cruise," and he's like, <laughs> "Yeah, but what's the most?" You know, he was trying to get people to answer the question like honestly. You know, like, and he couldn't get anybody to answer the question. Well, so because people, nobody wanted to say like the, the tooth. Nobody wanted to say the tooth, right? And nobody, yeah. And so finally, this one person was like, "I." He, this person was just like, listen, I'm, I'm waiting for my session. Like, I don't want to talk to you. And he was like, yeah, but what's the most obvious thing about me? And he was like, I don't care. I don't even know who you are. Like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> and he was like, Oh, you, you don't know who I am. He's like, no, I, you're, you know, this is why are, like I'm, I'm paying here to go in session and you're just like some student who's coming up to bug me. And this person was like genuinely annoyed that like Tom was like, you know, bugging him before a session, like was going to get up and like tell the, you know, uh, the HC director, like, excuse me, this rando has like come up to ask me, like, I don't want to be surveyed while I'm waiting for my session. And the person escorting him around was like, excuse me, ma'am ma'am this is tom cruise she's like i don't know who that is i don't i don't don't care i don't care and tom was like this is very refreshing hello who are you and he was like intrigued he's like well i'm on a course here and i just want to and he was like picking her brain like he was he was so excited to meet someone who didn't know him right so he was getting like a real reaction and like reading her tone you know like Uh. Like he thought this was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Someone who didn't know who he was, right? But he, she was like disgusted with him. Like, ugh, like, you know, excuse me, peon. Like I'm I'm a real person here. And so he said. That is really funny. It was insane. Like if I could buy that woman a drink now, I absolutely would. Who just was like, excuse me, please go away. To talk oh right. my God. <laughs> Here's a, a question that I'm kind of wondering myself. Who were the German celebrities in the, uh, at the Celebrity oh. Center? Oh, they were like, no, here's the deal. This is something I wanted to bring up that I was going to bring up. So the definition of celebrity, okay, at Celebrity Center is not what everybody thinks. It's not a movie star. It's not a TV star. So the definition of celebrity per L. Ron Hubbard is any person who is important in their field, okay? It's also not just that person. It is their relatives, friends, or like their circle, okay? It's also their their associates. Their entourage, right? And their entourage, okay? So let's, let's take somebody that we know, like Leah, just as an example. Obviously, Leah is a celebrity because she's on television. But this would also mean that by definition, I'm a celebrity because I'm in Leah's circle, because I know her, per the definition that they're using, okay? Which I'm I'm not, okay? But their definition would widen to include that. But at the time when I got recruited for Celebrity Center, technically by that definition, 
I was a celebrity because my aunt is or was by marriage Harriet Shock, who was a Grammy award winning writer uh, who wrote uh, Grammy award winning hits for Helen Reddy, Ain't No Way to Treat a Lady, and also um, was in the celebrity, you know, she would get invited into the president's office. And she was married to a man named Misha, who was also an award-winning producer. Additionally, my grandfather was an actual astrophysicist with an actual PhD, unlike L. Ron Hubbard, um, who invented the whole Earth telescope, who's a very important person in his field. Um, because of him, we now know how to find exoplanets and things like that. Um, so, like, technically by that definition, um, I would have been considered a celebrity, but because of the negative impact of my parents, my mother in particular, having been in the GEO, in Department B1, in the spy wing, which then turned into OSA, and my father's involvement in Operation Snow White. Um, he was not one of the people arrested. He just was one of the people that stole paperwork from a government building, which then gave them, you know, documents. Um, yeah, that was like, it's like the the joke, like if you eat celery before you eat pie, then you don't get any calories. Those two things canceled each other out. And then they're just like, you're a regular person. Right. It's <laughs> like in their mind, those two things like, you know, right. don't now make you nothing because they decide whether you're a celebrity or not. Like that's why in their mind, Danny Masterson is a huge celebrity when in in hollywood nobody gives a shit about danny masterson he is nothing like you say the name if you walk into a restaurant in la and you're like i'm with danny masterson the maitre d's like who gives two fucks about that guy like they the, nobody cares that's not that's not a name you're gonna drop to get into a restaurant no one's opening the the table for you Right. You know what I mean? So for the for the German situation, I mean, especially it since could have Americans... been a diplomat, it could have been like, you know, it could it could be a doctor who had performed big surgery. It could be anybody. So a celebrity could be anybody who's doing something that's major in their field. You could be a doctor, a lawyer, a businessman, um, a stockbroker. You could have any title that elevates you in society in some way, a, a, a real estate broker. Okay. Well, sure. And and also, but and also Nora, because they're a German celebrity and, and Americans have no idea what's going on in Germany, all the guy has to be mm -hmm. is someone who's some, one of the things that you just said, but just in Germany. Boom. So he could be a guy who has a radio show in Germany on exactly. AM, whatever they call AM radio. And he comes to America and like he's a radio star from Germany, and no one knows one way or the other. Exactly. Well, that's like how they claimed for years that, um, and now I'm trying to remember her name, Australia's number one singing artist. Kate Sobrano. Was, huh? Kate Sobrano. Kate. Thank you. Sobrano. Who's, who, by the way, I have no hate towards Kate Sobrano. She's a third generation Scientologist. One of probably the sweetest humans I've ever met on planet Earth in real life. But they would put her out there and say, Kate Sobrano, the number one, uh, you know, artist in all of Australia. And you go and ask any Australian person, you know, and if there's any Australians in the chat, please verify this information for me, just so I'm not a lying McLyerson right now. But like, is Kate Sobrano ever been number one on Australia's pop charts? Like ever, ever, ever in her entire life? I don't think I have so. been told, I've been told by so many people that Kate Sobrano really is the Mariah Carey of Australia. Is she? Well, then good I don't for know. her because I'm, I'm I, just saying, I think that's she has what a lovely voice told. and she's gorgeous. And truly, honestly, 100% one of the nicest people. And I did almost get RPF because of her one time um, and not because I partied <laughs> with her. Uh, when I was, uh, before I was a word clearer, I said, when I joined this year, I said, I'll do any post um, as long as it's not the recruiter. And so, of course, the first job I got was being the recruiter. And, um, so I was being yelled at. You're not recruiting anybody. You better get out there and um, 
uh, join, get people to join. People are saying no in the chat, but she's lovely. And so there was this woman sitting all by herself, just, you know, minding her business, eating her food. And so I walked up to her and I started, you know, chit chatting with her and I was like, Hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, I'm a third generation Scientologist. And I'm like, Hey, that's awesome. So like, what's your deal? Like, why aren't you like coming back in the sea org, you know, like me, like I'm a second gen. And she's like, yeah, I'm also a last lifetime clear. I'm like, Hey, me too. So like, Hey, you know where you're supposed to be. Like you should be getting in the sea org. And she filled out my whole questionnaire and blah, 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 blah. And we had this really nice chat, but she's like, you know, I just have a higher purpose of being a singer, you know, and I'm from Australia and I've been doing that, you know, professionally for a while. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, you could be fulfilling a bigger purpose in the sea org, you know, and reaching a lot more people and clearing the pit. Like I was giving, her the hardcore pitch of like get off your ass and clear the planet what are you doing singing in australia you know like what's wrong with you and she was like you know you're making a lot of really good points and i really feel like you know um you know you're 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 doing a really good job and thank you so much for letting me know and she was just like so polite about it so i come in back into my office and i'm like this bitch like I can't believe it she's a third like I'm just like like just screaming up a storm about this woman like I am just pissed that she won't join this year and the the my senior at the time's like who what's going on so I'm telling him this story about this woman and blah blah he's like well you, I can't believe you didn't close it let me see who this is I'm gonna I'm gonna go close it because you are inept and he grabs the survey from me he starts reading and he just goes like like white as a sheet. <laughs> you were recruiting Kate Sebron. I was like, yeah, she thinks she's somebody from Australia. And he's like, you go apologize to her right now. And I was like, I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing. She won't even join. Like, fuck her. And he's like, you, go apologize. you better go apologize right now. And so I go and I try to find her. And of course she's gone. And I'm like, I'm not, now I'm sweating. And I'm looking for her everywhere. And she's already back in the president's office. So I go into the president's office and she's in the middle of recounting my recruitment story. Oh no. To the president. And I walk in and she's like, Oh, this is, this is the girl. This is come in, come in, Nora, Nora. Do you know the president? And now the president had known my dad from back in the day. They were buddies from like the Davis mission days. And she's like, yes, I know Nora. <laughs> like, I am so dumb, I know. Like, hi, hi, sir, hi. Okay, that's how it is right now. And I come over and she's like, oh my God, I just want you to know, Nora is the absolute best recruiter you have. She gave me such a hardcore pitch on if I weren't, doing what I'm doing right now, I would have joined the Sea Org on the spot. Like just literally, Nora, you know, just the best pitch. Oh, and that's I, nice of her. I apologize, Miss Severano. I was unaware of everything that you're doing in Australia for some <laughs> country, and I think you are wonderful. And I would love if I could just follow you around and help you succeed in life. Like you're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> My purpose in life that is to serve all. you. That will be all. And I was just like, Oh my God, I'm dead. <laughs> There's so many people saying that she doesn't do pop music. I'm, I'm, uh, the Google machine says pop, rock, soul, and jazz. It sounds yeah, like I think it's more jazzy jazz. Mm. It's hard to imagine somebody being a big deal if they're a jazz singer. I mean, jazz isn't huge in the U.S. Uh, you know, main. I mean, it's not really mainstream. Like, I mean, that's why Chick Korea was she able to win six hundred. <laughs> What? It says she's famous for wearing a crochet dress to an award show more than anything. <laughs> well, she has that body. She could rock it. I don't know. So she is the um who was the um the black female Scientologist that wore the Trump dresses to the ground. No, no, she's not anything like what's that. Her what, what, what's her name? What what's her name? With gross what's her oh god, what? what's her name? J J no, what's her name? Oh god. Oh my joy. Joy. What what was her last name? Joy Villa. Joy Villa. Joy Villa. Joy Villa. Joy Villa. I mean, I, if you're just talking about someone who's most famous for what they wore to a show is what I'm talking about. Right, with the stupid Trump dress and the like. Uh, Joy Villa. 
I mean, I, somebody who's just there for the likes, just yeah. there for the likes, not even the lulls. She wasn't even trolling. She was just trying to increase her profile. No, literally, that is somebody who just switches parties based on what oh, is going to totally. get her attention. If if Absolutely. if if Scientology was democratic, because it's not, if Scientology was for Democrats, she would have been for Biden. She would have been wearing a Biden dress. Oh, yeah. She's just but, blowing yeah. with the wind. But, she's doing yeah. whatever she thinks will get her headlines. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, uh, you know, everyone who I know that has known Kate Sobrano has said she is a very beautiful, kind hearted person. Mm -hmm. And most people in the chat are saying uh, didn't even know that she was uh, she never promotes Scientology, which is amazing, because I'll tell you what Scientologists think she's out there promoting Scientology. That's what yeah, we were all like, told she was she's doing. She's our girl in Australia. <laughs> Yeah, Australian here. Meg me Meg says she's well known to the forty year old and above. So, so hey, Meg, hey now. Meg me hey. Meg, Meg me Meg. I want to know: Did you know? Is it is it known? Is it a known thing in Australia that she's a Scientologist? Like, is that a thing? She's you know. I mean, like, her her aunt is at CMO Pack. That's right. Aunt, that's right. Remember. That's right. I forgot Not they were that. related. He, Scientology is the smallest planet on Earth. It's the right. smallest town in the world. <laughs> wow. Uh, and her Oracle. Aunt was super cool beans, too. What's that? Her aunt was super nice. Her aunt was like unbelievably nice. Like one of the coolest, like CMO people, you know, Commodore's messenger people, was not a stick in the mud, wasn't mean, you know, besides your wife. Oh yeah, but you, you know what's funny? Um, well, this gets way into the weeds. I didn't even realize until afterwards when Heather was a little more open with me about it that the networks, the CMO networks, are looked down upon. They're not considered real CMO. So the the PPRO people, the senior CSN people, and the finance people are considered like you're here because you have to be, not because you deserve to be. You're not really a messenger. They were wow. treated. They were treated like um, uh, second class citizens. Did you know like that? Like you couldn't make it all the way to Int, so we put you here. Well, no, no, they're not. They weren't even considered real CMO, is what I'm saying. Ew. Seriously, did you know that? That makes sense because CMO people were just so like we are like we, we used to be like oh mm. like we had a code when the CMO people would come by we'd be like uh oh and we would just like. <laughs> Because they were so fucking snobby. They were just like, just like, they're like, you made that joke the other day that Leah ironed your shirts and you were like, I don't know if I've ever ironed my shirt. Like their shirts were starched within an inch of their, like you could like, like they were like Ginsu knives, their shirts. Like you could just like cut a bitch with like the, the side of their shirts. They were just like, like they had never like moved their arms in their shirts. They were just so taut and they were just like walk like, <laughs> you know, like their legs just, you know, and they were all like small children, you know, mostly. And it was like, they would age out or something. And then when they would got to like a certain age, they just went to RTC, you know, like, they would like only be in CMO for like a certain age group. And then they either went one place or the other, you know what I mean? They went to IXU yeah. or they went to like RTC. Here, real quick, to real quick, let's answer this. What is CMO? So, so guys, I will give the super, super short version. So yeah. in the Scientology hierarchy of organizations, um, there's so many ways to describe this, but here's how I'm going to try to do it. From the bottom of the organization to the very top of the organization called international management, these are the guys who are like supposed to be the real managers. But then you have a separate organization that's separate to and senior to the entire management structure. And these people, we're not, we're not giving the historical reason why it's called the CMO, which is the Commodore's Messengers Organization. We're not getting into the history of it. But the CMO's job is to make sure that management is there and managing. So they're basically um, a lot of chiefs. I mean, so, so let me try to do this better. CMO's job is to pester management why they're not being better managers. And RTC is the organization that David Miscavige runs. So CMO has essentially become the organization of children that runs around like monster soldiers, just <laughs> following David Miscavige's orders. So if RTC issues an order, 
It is CMO who gets that order complied with by management. Yeah. That, that's kind of a simple description. And CMO is mostly composed of teenage girls. Now, I know at the very top, it's, it's adult women and some adult men, but it's mostly, let's be honest, it's mostly teenage girls and girls in their 20s and then girls in their 30s. But, but people get into CMO, you get recruited into CMO when you're a teenager, usually right. a teenage girl. And it sounds really perverted, even though I think most people will say that um, in practicality. He's 100% designed that way from when he started his first ship. He surrounded himself with young women. And originally, the Commodore's messengers were all underage, if not barely 20-year-old girls. Oh, no, they were four, They were like 14. But but I asked yeah. Janice about this. Uh, you know, I interviewed Janice. Janice Gillum Grady, by the way, who has her own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's called our Scientology stories, peeling the onion. It's Janice Gilly and Mark Fisher. So I interviewed Janice, a, a publishing interview a couple of weeks ago, and she said it wasn't by design. It's just that we were the only ones there. There was like three or four, you know, uh, her and her sisters and one of the girls, she's like, we were just the only ones there. We were the only kids on the ship. As soon as we got there, Hubbard just used us to run his messages around and, I will admit, though, it's hard to explain why over the decades it's continued to be that way. I, it, it's hard I, to explain. I, I know Janice likes to I, I, I mean, I, I no hate to Janice because she's been through the ringer and she's, you know, I mean, she escaped many years ago. But the only reason it continued is because that was the way Hubbard wanted it, because after he came to land in the 70s and he founded gold and everything else he continued to staff it with children he didn't go like you know what would be a better system is if i had adults do my tasks for me that would be better how about if we don't employ children you know maybe kids should get an education maybe we should have these ranches filled with children who are doing labor instead of getting educated you know what maybe that would be a better plan no he's like hey you know what Hey, you know what, guys? Uh, I've got an idea. Kids are just big beings in teen tiny bodies. And they know everything about everything. And in fact, when you, my minions, have children, they have purposely picked these bodies because they are former Scientologists that have come back to continue this mission with me because they so loved what we were doing before. They missed it so much that they've got to come back and help me out. So they're just coming back to finish the mission. We come back revenue. Like, no, no, bitch. Like you're, when you die and you're a Seerg member, it's part of your memorial that you are granted. You've been granted like, like he's a genie you're granted a 21 year LOA leave of absence. Like, excuse me, we don't even get vacation. Now we're granted an LOA um, from the Sea Org, which no one gets to cash in on. You are starting, I, I think the first time I was recruited, I was eight years old. How, how old were you the first time you were recruited, Aaron? 13, but I didn't go to flag until I was 13. Right, okay. So the first time I was recruited for the Sea organization, I was eight, eight. Um, and that's totally normal. That's totally normal when you're in Scientology. If they look at you and you can like have a communication and you're looking someone in the eye and you like can carry on a conversation for more than three sentences, they're like, oh, big being, big being energy. Like this one's a winner. Let's big, go. You can get to big, work. Big, big being energy. I like, like that. What? <laughs> Big being energy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Real quick. Uh, I, there's a lot of topics that I just want to organically talk to you about, but let's just yeah. uh, tackle some of these super chats real quick. Uh, couch. Hello, all. Hello, hello. couch. Uh, my, my ama, Miyama, Mia, Miyama, whatever. Um, and Benito a Miyama. How about that? Okay. <laughs> 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 Got to send Nora some love. I would love to be your mom. You're so amazing. Oh, you thank you so much. Uh, okay, Valerie Boljack with a super sticker. Thank you. Uh, uh, buckle the thank buttercup. You, I mean, at this point, it could be, uh, we don't even know who to thank. It could be you. It could be me. We don't know, but. Thank um, you. Buckle we're the buttercup. Thank, we're both going to thank you. I, double, double the thanks, double the fun. Kathy Ann, 
so happy you can finally get monies, Nora. Thank you and Aaron both for your videos and lives about court this week. We love you both. Thank yeah. you. I, I love watching Nora's videos when I'm, uh, when I'm, uh, sometimes I'll secretly listen to them. Oh, wait, I can't admit to that. Um, okay, hold on. Um, <laughs> Ken's channel, super stoked to be Nora's 134th super chat. Hey, hey Ron, are you guys live on Monday or Tuesday? I have Scientology done messed up super chat coming. So I'm flying back to LA on Monday, but because of the time change, I think I will get there in time to do our live stream. So, and, and I promise you, even if I'm not part of it, there will be a live stream on on monday for sure uh mary super sticker thank you very very much okay petrazzi petrazzi i20 hey nora i've been enjoying your weekly updates strange some dude thought you were a spy baby sp right? out of the womb oh i must have missed that one what's that yes that was a good story it's one of many but yes wow. thank you thank you petrazzi Crazy. Uh, Elizabeth Roberts, super sticker. Thank you very much. Thank Tommy you. Villanueva, super sticker. Thank you very much. Thank you, pa Paula Puffer. I, why is that name so familiar? There was a Paula. Pa uh, anyway, um, the story about the Tom Cruise and the gaggle of teen girls is worth 10 bucks. There you go. Thank you, Tim. Thank Only you, Nora could make fetch happen. From <laughs> what does that mean? Is that a disgusting I, I thing? I said something last week about stop trying to make fetch happen. Is that a disgusting thing? No. <laughs> no, that's a line from Mean Girls. You have to watch me. You have to watch that oh, with your daughters. I have not seen Mean Girls. Oh I my God. Aaron, you got to watch this with your daughters. It's it's a okay. classic. It's amazing. <laughs> I saw that eight times in the theater. Okay. Linda P. Golan. Nora, you are a rock star. Happy birthday. Is it your birthday? Not today. Next week. Okay. How did people know it might be your birthday? I said in the, when I posted that we were doing a live, I said, my wife had got me an early birthday present. I said, it's self-care Saturdays. I went and got a massage. Oh, very nice. And that we were oh, going to do a live. Here's an interesting one. Uh, Carol D UK question for Nora. Were you shocked when you heard Aaron had left or was it the other way around? Did it make you think about it at the same time? Mm. I, 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 I I've left never thought about this. So and, I and I'm I trying to remember out, if I knew that though. I was out and talking secretly. Um, and then Aaron and I sort of I don't think we ever really lost touch. We had always been talking to each other, and then Aaron was talking to me in secret because he was very under the radar for a long time because of of family stuff and other things. And so we were in communication for a long time because like we all start out um, under the radar. Like it just, there's a lot of baby steps to this, much like coming out of the closet kids. Um, I think everybody has their own evolution. Some people just like bust through the wall, like the Kool-Aid man. And they're just like deuces. And they just have like a very explosive thing. Um, and they bust out on the scene and they're like, Scientology is crazy town. And they tell their story and other people, it's a quiet exit, kind of like Katie Holmes. And they're just like, we don't talk about Bruno and we're done. And then other people uh, kind of like me and Aaron, it's a very, like not a gradual exit, but it's sort of like you, you leave and then you take your time to do your own discovery and you have, there's other things that are involved. Like I was speaking out quietly under the radar because my mom was still in and I was living with her. So I couldn't cause too many waves. Um, cause I needed, but when, but when was that? When, when did you start talking about, um, uh, I started posting, I believe on Marty's blog first and then. Yeah, but when? When, 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 20, when, when? 2004, 2004, 2004. 2005. Hmm. Under my um, pseudonym, which people very quickly figured out who I was because I wasn't very like secretive. I was like, well, when I was word clearing so-and-so at Celebrity Center, like, you know. Yeah. Okay. Was, so was, I wouldn't was, have started. Really <clears throat> okay. Just okay. <laughs> so if you started doing that secretly in 2004, when were you officially declared? I got officially declared, I believe. Uh, 
I've still never seen my declare order. P.S. They still won't send it to me. Those bastards. When did people start telling you they were being told to? Disconnect oh, when from when I got all the disconnection letters, mm -hmm. I believe that was in two thousand and was it officially two thousand twelve. Yeah, two thousand twelve. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting because I was secretly posting on blogs as of 2000, like nine, 2010. So we were both secretly under the radar at the same time for a couple of years. So yeah. that means it, whenever I would have started to get messages about you, I would have already have been under the radar and been like, yo, what's up? I'm getting messages about you. Here's the deal. Here's, oh, yeah, here's yeah. what I'm we hearing. We were talking back and forth about, and mm -hmm. we had been talking about, and I still talk to somebody who is, most definitely like under the radar, but still has been stepping out a little bit. And she's, they've been running like a underground railroad for many years to help people get out and like, you know, find a life kind of a situation. Um, their own secret private underground railroad type situation. Um, so there's definitely people who are still, like not not in Scientology by any means of the idea of being in type situation, but they people presume that they are still in. Do you know what I mean? So they have their ear to the ground. Um, they know people that are in and then they wait for the signs of like that person's questioning it and let that person know like I'm a safe person. And then can lead them to like, hey, like resources like the Aftermath Foundation or even just like you can stay at my house and then I can help you to find like, yeah, you know, a pathway. Okay, good. So that was a good answer to that question. Yeah. But Turkey we never my... lost contact with each other because we never disconnected from each other in any way, shape or form. That's right. You know, so Tarkina Meyer says, I stayed up all night in Dallas to watch the coronation. No Tom Cruise. I wonder if he's uh, going to just be at the concert. Ooh. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't. Tom was supposed to be there and I haven't heard any mention of him actually being there. Did you see the first lady was stuck like way back in the back row in the church? Like, I couldn't believe that. Like, that's kind of insulting to the uh, don't you think? Um, really? uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, Jill, like I saw a photo of Jill Biden. They tucked her way in the back. I didn't, like, I, my mom watched the coronation. I didn't, I just I mean, saw I like, a little it. video of Camilla getting the crown put on her. And then she was like, what's that? Like her hair was fucked up and she was like, oh, <laughs> that's it. That's all I've seen. <laughs> um, all right. Claudia Bo Bothma regarding the trial. Did Claire not testify on Friday either? Right. Uh, court, was closed. court was closed on Friday. Um, and Man, Claire's I read testimony. That, I read that transcript of Claire's testimony. And then of course your coverage of it, like good job. Yeah. Yeah. Claire's testimony started and ended on Wednesday. There's uh, uh, technically she's subject to recall, but they're not going to recall it. There's no, Can I just say something? they don't want to recall Claire, man. They don't no. want to ask her more questions because the more Scientology that gets on the record, the worse it is. For Danny. That's the answer to that question. Because the more Scientology that gets put out there, um, the worse off the defense is in this case, 100%. Yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, back out, Goldie fan club member. There you go. Uh, oh my Goldie's goodness, Past best. Pastor Pastor Nance with the big super sticker. My goodness. Thank you, Pastor Nance. Wow. Sarah Woodrow with a, a super sticker. Um, Paula Puffer, I posted a super chat last night when Leah was on your channel. Oh, she, oh that, she's saying that's why I might recognize the name. Um, okay, LRH liked young CMOs because they are X trainable. They're extremely trainable. Yes, mm. uh, a hundred percent. Kids are more moldable um, than probably adults. But let me just comment about that. I will say that of the ex Scientology community, okay, um, people who have let go of Scientology in an easier fashion and moved on with their lives are probably people like me and Aaron, in a more so, Leah also being of that ilk because she's also a second generation Scientologist. Um, 
and Mike as well, believe it or not, he's also a second gen Scientologist, although people like to put him in an older category. Um, uh, Mark and Claire, same thing. Um, much more so than people who are first gen. Um, because when they got in and they were in for the formative years of their life, like their 20s, they got in after their teen years, and then they formed their core lifetime relationships, we'll say, and they gave up their families, okay? They abandoned their home families for Scientology and then built their life around Scientology. And now they've had to leave or been kicked out of Scientology for something because they discovered something about Scientology. Them having to let go of all of Scientology and move on from it is much harder they hang on to a lot of the principles, the language, the beliefs. Um, they're like, yeah, but um, I really like this one thing, but I got wins, but I like this thing, but I did good deeds, but I helped people. And they, they want to talk about the good times and they want to talk about, you know, and hang on to um, certain things. Right. And it's like, you know, um, it's, it's much harder for them to acknowledge the cultiness and other things being raised in it and having it encompass your whole life. And then coming to the realization at a later point in your life that your entire life leading up to that point was a complete buffoonery and just like everyone around you is lying to you is a hard pill to swallow. I'm not saying that was like, Oh, <laughs> Oh my God, that was so funny. I was in a cult and like my parents like totally raised me in that. Oh my God. I love that journey for me. Like, no, like that was awful. Right. Um, it's a lot of trauma and I'm paying a lot of money for therapy and other things, you know, like to deal with that. Um, PTSD is great, but um, it's easier for me to, acknowledge that and start dealing with it because of the generation that I'm in and be able to say, yeah, I, that happened and I can move on from it. But also their generations don't go to therapy and they don't like now they can't because it's so ingrained in them that therapy is bad. Like they're not going to go see a psychiatrist or psychologist. Are you kidding me? Those guys are the reincarnated overlords from outer space that were sent here to, you know, suppress everyone so they can't but you know it's 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 tomato tomato so it's much harder for them and then you know um it makes me sad because i want everybody to heal from this traumatic experience um because it is very difficult you know to move on from it and to heal from it and to grow and be able to have a successful life because all of us have life left in us we shouldn't be just like stuck with, with that hanging on you all the time, you know? What was the original comment or question? I forget. I, w I went on a speech. Uh, I don't remember either. Um, but hey, one thing I wanted to ask you specifically about the trial. Uh, yes. Do you feel like the unique experience that someone like Jane Doe 3, Jane Doe 2... Mm. Now, Jane Doe 1 was not dealt with at the Celebrity Center, but Jane Doe 2 and 3 were. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you feel like the unique experience they would have been subjected to at the Celebrity Center, filing a complaint or having been, been subjected to something like this by a celebrity, is being, uh, is being given uh, its justice, is being portrayed in its uh, uh, correctly, accurately by the by the 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 DA team um getting getting it across how Scientology would have uh made these victims feel that because Danny is an upstat and has ethics protection and is a high producer that um you know th th they are f essentially filing a report on an upstat and right. you know so the Scientology policy is 
when you receive a report on someone who has ethics protection as a high producer, you should investigate the person who's submitting a report, not the person who's being reported. Uh, I, I think, can only imagine. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel this is being given its proper its proper light? I think because Jane Doe's two uh, testimony on Thursday really touched on that more than the the testimony of Jane Doe three because they didn't delve into that with her. Um, because she touched on that specifically on what happened for the two incidents that happened to her, because it happened to her twice. It happened to her with her original boyfriend, um, who was also a Scientologist. So this happened to her twice at Celebrity Center. She had an incident with a, a Scientologist who was is not named in this case. Um, and she went to the ethics officer. And because it was another Scientologist, she reported a crime, which was rape. And immediately she was met with, hey, you can't report another Scientologist for a crime. We don't do that here. That's not how we play ball. And so she was basically told that's not what happens. You can't be like she was basically told by the ethics officer, you can't get raped by somebody you're in a relationship with. And then she started thinking, well, maybe that's, you know, she started replaying the whole thing in her head. And that's not maybe that's not what happened. I maybe I'm misremembering. And she like talked herself out of it. Right. So then years later, she meets Danny. Bum, 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 bum. This whole thing happens. And we, she went into very graphic detail of that incident and she reports it. Now it's alarm bells because it's her Scientologist and not just regular Joe Scientologist, but now we're dealing with celebrity Scientologists. And as Claire laid out, this would have an escalated procedure other than just ethics report. This would be then going to RTC and other people with code names and code words and all this other stuff. President's office is involved. All these other people are involved. So this is like super high alert, right? So not only would she be being dinged as the problem and the, the potential trouble source and all these other things inside of Celebrity Center, right? And she would be under investigation immediately, right? But, um, and I apologize to whoever got cranky with me saying right a lot in the earlier, but I do say that a lot. Um, however, uh, what would happen is she would get told that, uh, you know, basically, she has to stop any like talk of this incident with anyone like just who have you told what have you said uh how many times have you said it where have you discussed this like just beyond the normal time place form and event that you normally have to list in like a report they would want to know every single minutia of the minutia of the minutia involving this and who else saw you go there and who knew you were going there? What texts have you sent about it? And all this stuff. It, and she didn't get into that minutia detail um, on the stand in particular, but I think she covered it um, in a way that touched on it that I think hopefully gave the jury pause. Like why would a church be so focused on this and not be like, Hey, you just reported that this guy assaulted you, that he raped you, but we're, we're yelling at you. We're not bringing this guy in at all, you know? And like, where's, where's the, where's the outrage towards this guy? You know, where's his disciplinary action? Where's his, you know, like she didn't even get an apology from him. She, they didn't even make them make him come in the room and be like, yeah, I'm so sorry that, that I, I was out of line. You know, yeah. like not, not even that, mm -hmm. not even the bare minimum. Yeah. Like, Jane Doe three, crazy. Jane Doe three did get into um, a little bit the sub, uh, uh, the subject of ethics protection and suppressive acts and reporting. Cause she did Jane Doe three did go to uh, the ethics office, uh, ethics officer at the celebrity center and report all this. But the reason the testimony is different from Jane Doe 2 is because Jane Doe 3 was barely a Scientologist and she'd only okay. gotten into Scientology through Danny. Whereas Jane Doe 2 was a Scientologist 
uh, in her before ever meeting Danny and right. seems seems much more fluent in in the language. Mm -hmm. And so her testimony um, is a is much more detailed on well, this in the fact that she knew that signed that Celebrity Center was married to the LAPD. Right. That was very and the interesting. fact that she knew that she was scared to go to the LAPD to even talk to them because she knew beforehand going to them wasn't going to produce any kind of result because potentially they were already buddy buddy. OK. And, and, and people would ask me personally, like um, about my story, the night that I ran out of, you know, like if you know anything about my story, there was a night before I, I eventually, you know, left in very dramatic fashion, which I can get into on another time. But I, I ran out of the building and I was injured and I did not run down the street. I instead ran to the security office at um, the pack base at, at, and, and the big blue building. Right. And I had a choice in that moment. I could have run straight down Fountain Avenue and there is a fire station like two miles from the big blue building, which I could have just, if I, I was barefoot at the time, but I could have run towards this fire station. That's many, many blocks is at Vermont and Fountain, right? If I had just run. Um, and people often ask, why didn't you run? Why didn't you go to the police and all this stuff? Because I knew because of my, my personal relationship with the many retired uh, police sergeants and other things that we personally hired at Celebrity Center uh, for security uh, because I saw them there all the time. And the entire uh, off-duty Hollywood division that I knew that we would hire for events, that we would hire when uh, any huge celebrity was coming, they were surrounding our building always. Um, so there was no point and going to the police because they would literally have just brought me back. And so most people who were close enough to the president's office saw this in action. If you go to any celebrity center um, gala, you see the, the police and the sheriff collect checks that are as big as my room from the president and the commanding officer celebrity center that we're giving to the police activities league and we're giving to the sheriff's whatever dilly bob and they're all walking around they bring their you know their high ranking guys and they walk around shaking hands with celebrities and like oh thanks for the free sushi and blah 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 and like so you know you know that the and we bring all the government officials and we bring the city council and we bring the state officials and we bring all these people to the celebrity center gala. So there's, there's no one to report it to. There's no one. You can't report it to the mayor. You can't report it to the city council. You can't report it to the DA's office. You can't report it to like anyone. Okay. Because they're all in, oh, sorry. They're all in the bag because Celebrity Center, like you explained earlier with Leah and everyone else, they're doing the safe pointing everywhere. In yeah. LA, there is, in, in all of California, there is basically nowhere to run to, which is why I am so like over the moon that this case is being run so well by the DA's office right now, that they yeah. are actually like going for the throat of Scientology right now is amazing to me and the fact that we have a judge on the bench that is like listen up scientology if you don't want to be like part of this case stop like putting your face in the case yeah you know yeah yeah um and, and also that jane doe too she didn't even this was actually a really powerful testimony because to explain to give the jurors context for why she didn't even report the actual charged incident with Danny to the mm -hmm. Scientology authorities. It's because she had already gone down that path previously with her, uh, an earlier boyfriend who was a Scientology, um, an auditor in training, wasn't a celebrity, but was considered an upstat, had ethics right. protection. He was doing his auditor training. And she already knew, oh, you can't, you can't even report a Scientologist for rape because you just get investigated yourself because... Uh, and, and so, so she actually 
was allowed to testify at it in quite some detail yeah as to what happened the first time with that ex-boyfriend several years prior which which just proved like if you report an upstat nothing happens and so right. clearly danny was considered an upstat and the way i explained that earlier in the week was like if you're an upstat in the church's eyes, every celebrity is an upstat, okay, because they're out there promoting Scientology. They honestly don't even, you know. Well, even if they're not really, even if even, even if, it's if just they're not really, even if they just yeah. exist and they're out there in the world, as long as they're not murdering someone or being the gay, they are upstat. Because if they're out there just being a celebrity and people know who they are, and then they once in a while go, uh, and somebody says. Oh, well, I heard you're a Scientologist. Isn't that about bad stuff? And they're like, Scientology has made me the actor I am today. And I would not have my job if it weren't for the Church of Scientology. And then boom, upstat, because they did that uh, on an interview. Because that's all, frankly, Elizabeth Moss has ever done for Scientology. That bish is a second gen Scientologist who, as I pointed out earlier, was allowed to be the spokesperson for Excedrin. Aaron, how many Excedrins were you allowed to take while you were in the Sea Org? Please tell, please tell the audience how many. Oh, yeah. Definitely never had an Excedrin. Thank you. How many aspirins when you had a headache were you allowed to take? You know, me personally, I always kept a secret stash of Advil because <laughs> I would get... Of course, I would get but, bad migraine but I mean, like, headaches. What were we allowed to take? Let's be honest with the audience. How many were we allowed to take? Most Scientologists will tell you they're not, it would, they, you're just not right. allowed to. Yeah. None. None is the answer. You certainly None. can't be out there being the spokesperson the for exception. When we got sick, real talk, when we got sick, okay, when we got sick, you don't go to a doctor. You have a medical liaison officer. They take your temperature. They're like, hmm. Okay, you have a fever. You have to go to isolation. Isolation is some disgusting room that no one has cleaned ever, that has some mattresses on the floor that don't have any sheets, that maybe has a, you bring your pillow from your dorm room, okay? And you bring a blanket and you're just in this disgusting room by yourself. They give you some orange juice and some garlic cloves and tell you to go rid yourself of your illness and give you a vitamin C chewable bottle and tell you to like, you know, hudden the emotion DIA, like get those demons out and like, you know, get better. And they come check on you like once every three days to make sure you're not dead. Hopefully there's a bathroom nearby. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's weird that <laughs> she would be allowed to uh, be a spokesperson for Excedrin. But you know, when I was uh, doing temp work as a Philadelphia staff member, I was working in HR at Glax GlaxoSmithKline. <laughs> I still can't believe you got I like it blows my mind that you got away with that. I mean that's crazy. Yes, and they loved me. They absolutely loved me. Um all right, let's uh do some of these super chats and then um and then we'll wrap it up here. Uh, Anaphylaxis, really enjoying your content and your lovely personality. I'm sure that's on your channel. So there oh. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Kimber Du Smythe, uh, where can I read the transcripts? Um, on the Underground Bunker blog, you can read the transcripts. He does it um, on his sub stack now. So you have to go there. He doesn't actually put it on his blog. I don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> Cat ACDC fan, really enjoy both of your updates on trial. <laughs> <laughs> so addicted to SPTV. You both seem to have no fear. Keep it up. Oh, speaking of having no fear, um, I was reminded, uh, what was, there was another second generation Scientologist who oh, wrote a book Catherine recently. Catherine Spolino, everyone. If you have not picked up Catherine's book, um, I, got, I got to put a link to it on my channel, but she's written a brilliant book. It's called The Bad Cadet. Uh, we were both in the Sea Org. Uh, at the same time as her, uh, she was at the pack base. So was her whole family. Her mom's still in at uh, is, Asho. Is her mom Eunice? Yes. So her 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 brother is Philip. Yes, and James. Why don't I remember her? You do Who, remember her. I'm going to show you her picture. I'm going to show you her Instagram. Which org was she at? I think she was at Asho too. You know her. Was she in the? She wasn't in the Colin unit, was she? Probably. I I'm going to show you her picture. You're going to be like, I know her. 
Cause someone emailed me about doing an interview with her, but, it, but it was, I, when, when people email me about other people, I tend to ignore the emails. Yeah. And I think I responded to the email by saying, is her mother Eunice? And I never got a response. So I yes. just never, her mom never is revisited Eunice. it. You know her, she was just young. And then you probably were like, uh, okay. You know, she, I don't think you were dealing with her directly. So, but yeah, you know her, you know her. She was a um, kid. Are, did you interview her? Are that. you going to interview her? I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can get her to come on the channel with me and we'll talk about her book and everything. She, her story is amazing. The book is amazing. It is a, like a very honest look at what growing up in and being born in to the Sea Org and her life, her family life is really like, and it's a very honest, very vulnerable look at that. It's very well written. Please go pick up her book. Um, writing a book is so hard. I'm surprised that I'm like, you know, it, it's very time consuming. Uh, I wonder, and also getting people to buy your book is really hard if you don't have a way to get the word out. Have you spoken to her already? Is she considering doing a channel? I don't know if she's doing a channel. I'll ask her. She should. She, she should. 100% yeah. should. Um, especially if you've got a book. Yeah, John Atak sure. uh, interviewed her today. So, oh, like they published it, like he, it, it, it's on I think the channel it's on or his, on his YouTube or wherever he's publishing his stuff. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. great. No, yeah. I'd love to talk. I love to talk with her. I just I don't know who I got the email from, but it wasn't her. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Are you already in touch with her? Um, yeah, we've been chatting a little bit okay. on on the on the gram. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, let me see here. What does this say? Jay Dice. Nora, as a mom, I intuited my son was the gay. I was excited. He finally was okay to tell me at 16. Am I correct in assuming your parents were not as celebratory as I was? Skip if it's too personal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my dad had passed when I was 19. Um, he was terrified of me being the gay. Um, my mom was like, when uh, she found out I was the gay by accident, uh, she had a uh, fondness for doing my laundry when I was in the Sea Org so that I would come visit her uh, while I was in the Sea Org. So that was how she got me to see her all the time. So um, the love notes that I was writing back and forth to the person that I was having a very secretive relationship with, um, because that was very, you know, Pethion, the way that we were, because it was so like kindergarten. Um, she found one of these notes that I had kept in my pocket because, you know, she went, she's like, so old school. I'm going to go through the pockets, make sure there's nothing in the pockets. And so then she read it like rude. Like she, she was one of those moms that was like, I read your diary. I found out that you want to cut your hair. I don't want you to cut your hair. And so she was like, is there anything you want to tell me? Um, and so when I was, when I knew I was going to the RPF um, for, um, being the gay, I told her to come see me at CC. And I was like, we need to go to lunch. And we went to this horrible Chinese restaurant across the street from CC. And I was like, listen, I'm in really big trouble. And I'm either going to get booted and you're going to have to come pick me up or I'm going to the RPF. And she's like, is this because you're gay? And I was like, what? How do you, what? How do you, know? you know, and she was like, uh, and then she pulled, she goes in her purse and she's like, I found this. And I was like, oh my God, why are you reading this? <laughs> and she's like, it's okay, honey. You know, I mean, I kind of guessed the way that I saw you guys together at the event. And then I was like, oh my God, like, that's not, you know, I was trying to be like denying it even then anyway. So she was like, it's fine. I don't care, you know. And then when I left, she was like, my whole family knew why I'd gone to the RPF. And they were like, my godfather, who's like the total man's man, was like, listen, if you want to date girls, you know, like, that's fine. And, you know, that's, you know, if you want to date a girl, you go find the best girl out there and you get married and be a lesbian. All right. <laughs> And that was like my family. And then I just like had the opposite reaction. I was like, I'm not gay. I'm going to go marry a man and have babies because <laughs> I'm just going to be a tourist and be difficult. <laughs> like, and it was stupid. I should have just done it. And I don't know. 
yeah, that was dumb. And then my dad, when I first moved, when I was a teen, when I was a teen, my very first job in Scientology before I joined the Sea Org was, you know, I was straight out of high school and I got hired at a Scientology school to be a PE teacher um, because, you know, super qualified right out of high school to do that. And um, I had no idea what PE teachers look like, except for my own PE teacher who um, had a roommate um, that she lived with full time, who was another woman. Um, I didn't realize they were the gay, um, but I just thought she looks like a PE teacher. So I got her uniform, which of course was like a track suit and a whistle and a stopwatch. And I look like Sue Sylvester. And I didn't realize that that was like the gayest outfit in the world. And my father uh, who I lived with at the time saw me like rocking the gayest outfits ever and was like, we're putting you on the affinity connection and we're finding you a husband right now. Cause you look like a lesbian. <laughs> was so upset and tried to marry me off to a Scientologist in Florida who was like 15 years older than me. He was like, I'm going to fly you here on my private jet and I make $600,000 a year because you look like a prime meat to make babies for me. <laughs> and I was like, ew, you're, you have a hairy chest in your picture and you're bald. Like, well, I was 18. I was like, no, my stepmother's like, he's make 600,000 a year. I'm like, then you go marry him. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So oh. I should have known then I was super gay. So yeah. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Even my, my first my tried goodness. to tell me I was gay kids. The license plate was one DYK 800. Like I should have known it was the we used to joke and call it the one 800 Dyke mobile. <laughs> oh my God. You're going to get us. You're going to get us both demonetized. Look well, at that you. Was the, it's just that it was the license plate. It said it, not me. No, you can say whatever you want at this point in the video. <laughs> Um, let's see. Lisa Marchbang says my first super chat for Nora question. Do you ever come to Los Angeles to visit? Happy birthday, Nora. I haven't been in a long time. I should get to LA. I have a lot of uh, friends down there. Maybe Aaron and I'll start our comedy tour down in LA. We'll have to. Yeah. We'll start it at an in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let's see. What does this mean here? First is. It's way past bedtime. And they've been wondering, I, does Scientology have a first name culture? Right. They asked that earlier uh, oh. because the Tom did kind of only for wait, like. Wait, 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 wait. But how would we define first name culture? Because you're not allowed to call anyone senior to you by their first name. No. If they're if they're in the Sea Org, you have to call them sir. Um, uh, how about this? How about this? How about this? It's not the culture where in order to be respectful, you just call people Mr. Blah or sir. If they're your peer, you're calling everyone by their first name. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is that what first name culture means? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, absolutely not. If you're in the Sea Org and someone is a higher rank than you or senior to you, you must call them, sir, whether they're a man or a woman. 100%. Hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you for the super chat, Larissa. Uh, let's see. I saw one from my uh, good friend, James Hunsinger. Was Claire an expert for the defense? Nope. Claire was testifying for the prosecution to help testify as to the Scientology policies uh, that would be related to why the Jane Doe's um, uh uh, some of their counterintuitive behavior that uh, from the juror's perspective uh, would have been exhibited following these attacks. Not only are these counterintuitive behaviors were they testified to by an actual expert in counterintuitive uh, behavior post-sexual assault, right. but there's a whole other layer of Scientology reasons to explain counterintuitive behavior. And that's Absolutely. essentially what Claire also, was Also, she wasn't a, a witness for the defense. Um, that was a terrible witness. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you want to answer this, Nora, up to you. Nora, if you don't mind, what is your clock-in job? Were you late Friday after your alarm? I was late, but my bosses are super cool. My team was all right because I'm never, ever, ever late. So it's all right. One, one time thing, um, you know, it's all right. There you it, go. They love me where I'm at. I do a good job. 
Franny Galanders, did the judge specifically instruct the jury not to research Scientology? Sounds like Jane Doe Two's testimony was heartbreaking. Um, the jury's instructed not to look up or research anything relating to this case or anything. Now, I don't recall anyone being told don't Google Scientology because Scientology is not on trial. So uh, I don't remember those instructions, but I don't, who knows? Uh, I don't know. Well, how. Well, I mean, I, yeah. They're and by the way, if I was on that jury, I'd be like right now. So they they're, they're not, I don't think. Yeah, they're not sequestered. So what they do in their own personal time. I don't know. I don't yeah. know the legality of that. All right. So let's see this. The end either. is near. Beware says I added you a, a run two questions that would have cost like 200 <laughs> bucks to super chat them. Oh, and so I have found them. It okay. says does. Mm, excuse me. Does Scientology use celebrities so much as much? What? Okay, can you read this for me, Nora? I'm... Okay. Uh, does Scientology oh, use celebrities so much as money they have well easier made them than most others have some amount of money and it's easier to get them to part with it? Okay, hold on. Let's check out the okay. other part. So, um, growing yes, up, or, they, or, or, do, they or do they use, use or the ability to bring in more people? Okay, so yes. So both, okay? The answer to that is both. So do they use them for the money or do they use them for the fame to bring in more people for the more monies? So the answer is um, both. They, they definitely make celebrities donate large portions of money because they have large portions of money. Um, examples of that would be uh, when uh, we relaunched, we, when, when Scientology relaunched uh, Hubbard's fiction and was trying to get it on the New York Times bestsellers list so that his name could be in lights again and like bring relevance and attention back to Scientology. What was the name of that stupid book? The the Spanish one. It was not a Spanish one, but it took place in like some Spanish country. Ay, Pedrito. Ay, Pedrito. Thank you. So Pedrito. Be, thank you. Pedrito would be a small dog. Pedrito. Like Pedrito. Yes. Pedrito. Right. Ay, Pedrito. Yeah, yes. that one. Okay, so when that book launched again, we had, and of course it's a contest between all of the orgs to see who's going to sell the most and all this kind of hullabaloo, okay? So we had all the celebrities buy massive amounts of quantities of these books because each person only needs one that they're going to like put on a bookshelf and never read. Okay, let's be honest. That, that's what's going to happen with these books. No one's reading them. But we would say, oh, we're going to donate them to all these libraries. It's for a library campaign. It's we're, you know, we're sending them to illiterate children across the country, whatever. So, <laughs> illiterate. <laughs> whatever. Some, some BS campaign that's going to happen. <laughs> and so we would get the celebrities to buy a thousand copies each, right? It says we got to get Hubbard's name back on the New York Times bestseller list. We need to make, you know, we had like some thermometer thing and we're coloring it in. Um, and we must have stayed up all night selling iPadritos and we're calling celebrities in every country. So as we're watching the clocks, we got like clocks up. What time is it in England? What time is it in Greece? What time is it in this country? We're calling people in China. We're calling people in Australia, we're calling people all over the country with, with regs with like two phones on their face and like all this crazy stuff to sell. I Pedrito Google this book. It is so dumb. So okay. Dumb. Um, we had the whole, do you remember L. Ron Hubbard way was like decorated? Like it was like, a, we had Mary. This was, this out. was before my time in LA. Oh God. We, we had just finished putting in the cobblestones on L. Ron Hubbard way. It just gotten renamed L. Ron Hubbard way at the time from um, its original name. It was a whole thing. Was it, was it North Boriendo street before or something yes. like that? North yeah. Borendo. Yeah. Borendo. Borendo. And now it's L. Ron Hubbard Way. The city's still trying to take that back. There's a whole, every year, there's a group of Angelinos that try to petition to get it re put back as Borendo um, because they do not like that it is L. Ron Hubbard Way. Um, they fail every time because, you know, they scrape together enough Scientologists to like sign the petition and file the paperwork again. Um, yeah. It's a whole thing, but they, they somehow got the permits to cobblestone it with those Fakakta uh, bricks that the RPF laid out. Yeah. 
that was, we all got to, we all got time off to go lay our own brick, like go lay some bricks. And I'll never forget. I didn't know a few of my friends had got RPF'd at the time, like who we were training with at flag Kylie Rose. I did not know she was RPF'd at the time. Mm. She was out there laying bricks and I, I, we had gotten time off to go lay bricks and I'm like laying the bricks and I look over to my left and who's to my left. It's Sandra D. It's Kylie Rose Pierce. <laughs> Did and you I know like, some something's going on with Kylie Rose? She's uh what's happening? she's one of the people that have been sent out to one of those houses in Glendale to die. She's got some diagnosis. What? Yeah. You know, do you know do you know she married Damien Kevitt? What? She married Damien Kevitt, which to be honest is kind of gross. Um what? But, so you know, there's yeah, we're, we're, we have. Oh, I am sense. finding out some crazy stuff. What? Yeah, I don't know if. Uh, yeah, Kylie has something terminal. She she's shipped off to one of these houses in Glendale to, to where they send the Sea Org members to who are dying. Oh my God, I'm. I yeah. am going to be distraught. So Kylie is someone that Nora and I have known since you know we were four, 14, 15, whatever. My -ish. wife is running up the stairs right now because I'm screaming. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, Kylie's someone, you know, they ask who's people you wish would leave Scientology, man. I wish Kylie Rose would leave Scientology. Oh, my God. I am. Yeah. Yeah, well, now Scientology knows that we know, so they'll probably ship her off somewhere else. Maybe now, somewhere, is, maybe this somewhere goes better. goes back to what I said on Friday or Thursday. Scientology's credo is yeah. you make to make the able more able. And... The Sea Org is famous for, like, if you have some, anything wrong with you, physically, mentally, emotionally, you're not qualified, not only to not be in the Sea Organization, but to not be a, a, a Scientologist. Okay. So I, I want everybody to clearly understand that. Um, and that's why I, I said earlier, there are no blind Scientologists. There are no handicapped Scientologists. There are no... Um, in any way, mentally ill Scientologists. Like it was interesting to me that both you and I touched on completely different points after reading the transcripts of Jane Doe number two's uh, testimony. Um, we like, and I loved what you, what you said, but like we touched on two completely different points. Um, when Sea Org members get old and they do, because there's Sea Org members that have been there 30, sometimes, you know, 30 plus years. The Sea Org was started in 1972 um, or 1969, sorry, I got my year wrong, uh, 1967. And, um, and, um, some of them are still there from, from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and some of them have been there since the seventies, some been there since the eighties. Um, some of them are, have been there since I've been born. So that's 47 years. Right. Um, when they get too old, they are um, sent away because you can't have, you know, decrepit people uh, in the presence of the public yeah. because that's a bad look for Scientology. You can't have people who have cancer, who have a heart condition, who are in some way not uh, perfect, right? Because Scientology is perfection. Yeah. You hear that somebody who is your age, Aaron, because Kylie is the same age as you, um, is dying right now, is unbelievably heartbreaking to me. Um, I mean, she, you know, she stopped talking to me a number of years ago, but I never stopped having love in my heart for her because of our closeness that we had for many years, you know, um, that just. Yeah. And, and she's, she's in one of these families where, her whole family was in the Sea Org, and yeah. and and she's never had a life outside of. She has she has nowhere to she could go, um, at least that's probably what you know what she thinks. That and what what's crazy is that a lot of these people, if they were just to get away from the crazy stressful environment where everything's your fault and you're the reason everything's wrong with you, and um and you're forced, you're not even given opportunity to relax and convalesce and heal you're considered a downstat and unproductive right. if you just want you know just to 
you know, chill for a while. If she were to just get out of that environment, I don't know what's wrong with her specifically, obviously, but in many cases, if you just get out of that environment, you yeah. actually start getting better. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I mean, you and I both know, um, collectively, I mean, if we got it in a room of people that we know, we could all name at least five people each that we know that have died of cancer that are Scientologists, because by the time most Scientologists find out that they have cancer, it's stage four and they're going to, they've got like a month to live. Yeah. Um, because they don't, they don't have treatment, any pain that you're having, it's PTSDness and you're going to push through and you're going to keep going and you're going to audit it out and you're going to get an assist and you're going to go see Dr. Berg and you're going to go see, uh, you know, Dr. Megan Shields and you're going to go see all these Scientology doctors that are going to just tell you to take a vitamin and do all this other stuff. And, um, you know, by the time you go see a real doctor because you've passed out at work or you collapse in your car or something else, um, you know, you're in the ER and they're like, uh, yeah, I, it's your, uh, yeah, your, your life is over. Yeah. And, and what's amazing about hearing that like, Kylie, well, it was nice knowing you. And then they just literally are like, well, thanks for all your donations. And they just like, you know, they cut ties with you. They won't even send people to help you. That's when they literally like all the train stops. Your friends aren't there for you. You're no longer, even if you're OTA at that point, it's like you're yeah. off the rolls. Yeah. You're, yep, you're yep. out of the club. Yeah. I mean, so, look at the Yeah. Now, Scientology already knows how we know about Kylie because the Aftermath Foundation helped someone escape from one of those houses. And, and they know that we helped that person and no one's heard that story yet. When, when, when you, when people hear me say, Oh my God, you guys just wait till you hear the fucking stories. We haven't been able to tell you yet. This is one of those stories. And I, I'm not giving away anything because Scientology already knows. Um, I'm, I, so I'm not saying anything. Scientology doesn't already know beyond that. I'm not going to give away any details, but um, you know, they, uh, the, the jig is up. We, we know, we know what's going on in those houses. <laughs> And it's some crazy ass shit. Let me tell you. No, it's nuts. I mean, it's just, yeah. I mean, like I always tell people when you think that, you know, everything about Scientology and how bad that they treat people, it's always worse. And yeah. when they're treating you bad, when you're entering and inside, when they, at the end, it's even worse. It's yeah. even worse. Oh, that's our cue. Everyone. My light has died. <laughs> Now, nah, hold on. Before we sign off, let me just put a new light in. Oh, my God. <laughs> hold on. I got backup batteries. Always be prepared. <laughs> Look, I'm wearing shorts that don't match my shirt. <laughs> Aaron's like the news anchors that just wear the suit part on top, and then below, they're just rocking like Bermuda shorts at the table. <laughs> uh That's all amazing. right it's perfect it's perfect you should be comfy what does this mean here uh we're gonna have an awesome the gay pride this month in puerto yes. vallarta what's what where's puerto vallarta isn't that in uh that's it's not mexico. it oh it's mexico okay is there some is it like a special something no, it's special pride. In... It's pride. pride has started it like just goes for like forever i got it okay gay for pride uh, Kimber Do Smythe, get uh, an um, at In and Out, get a double double with cheese, animal style, and a Neapolitan shake. Mm. Yes, I can't have the Neapolitan shake. I'm allergic to strawberries, but yes, get the Neapolitan. I always get the chocolate. There you go. Uh, das Schultz. Hi, Aaron and Nora. <laughs> Got on live. Thank you for all you do. Danke, You're Das Schultz. Das Schultz. German is my my favorite language to uh, only learn a little bit of. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mach schnell. Mach schnell. Um, <laughs> Pamela Crawford, Nora, you need to write a book as well. It will sell so fast. I, you know, I'm, I might just do that. I might just do that. Um, what is this one? First name question mark, but all celebs are honorary SEERG members, right? No. So they're all sir, males and females. Can't wait for Dave. Only on Tom, as Leah explained, <laughs> that is not the case for all celebrities. They're not honorary SEERG. 
Yeah, I, I, uh, Mark said that last night, but I think he misspoke or he was trying to oversimplify it for people. Not all celebrities are honorary Sea Org members. If a celebrity wants to join the Sea Org, they are told, no, well, you can become an honorary Sea Org member because you need to keep doing what you're doing. Right. Tom is the only one who's ever forcibly, like literally tried to leave his celebrity dumb to join the Sea Org. <laughs> he was like, at one point, I'm, that's it. I'm off purpose yeah. and I'm quitting acting. Yeah. And I'm I'm coming with you, DM, and we're gonna be, you know, amigos, and we're gonna run the Sea Org. And I think <laughs> David was really threatened by that because let's face it, who would the Sea Org members vote into power? Teeny tiny David or Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> teeny tiny Tom or teeny or tiny or David? <laughs> Tom is like two, like an inch taller than David. But let's be honest. Are we following the last samurai to the edge of the universe to clear this planet? Or are we following DM? We're following Tom Cruise. And like, let's be honest. If he was the head of the Sea Org, recruitment straight up and vertical. Everybody's joining the Sea Org. We're doing it right now. The entire live chat's doing it. We're all joining the Sea Org. Mark makes a really funny argument um, about why you would really want to throw down with Xenu. And he's like, are you kidding? You have a galactic overlord who, 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 who perfected faster than light travel and was able to pull off everything he pulled off. If shit goes down, you want to be on Xenu's side. You don't want to be with Dave. Right, Zenu, the intergalactic overlord, or Dave. <laughs> but also, but also, remember he perfected faster than light travel in an airplane that looks like a B fifty two bomber. I don't think so. What? <laughs> no, like yeah. How how was that L. Ron Hubbard's imagination? And then we got Star Trek, and then they never changed it like mm, i think the design looked more like that like no one went back and was like and then actually it looked like the uss enterprise like they could have like just been, like, you know and then just like we had enough people that could have dubbed his voice and it looked like blah, 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 blah. like come on like Please. <laughs> uh, it looks like a B-52 bomber. Like, <laughs> come on. Uh, all right, everyone. Let's wrap it up there for the evening. Uh, this has been a fun chat. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, yeah, my love. Then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, so 